Now, our next question, Jim, sent to CornyDriveThru at gmail.com from Lem Smalley in Stanford, North Carolina. Lim! Oh, Cousin Lim! Apparently, he just got two Jim Cornette figures and is very pleased, according to this email. And by the way, we forgot to do the figures update. By this Wednesday, all the domestic orders will be in the mail. And then we're starting on internationals come Friday morning. So it's almost there, folks. Just keep your fingers crossed and keep thinking those good thoughts. Go ahead with Lim. How'd you, he did get figures. I remembered signing his figures. Lim is not a common name anymore. It's like Ethel and Gladys for the, the women. You don't run across it that often anymore. During a Sports Illustrated interview from 2015, Kevin Nash had this to say about The Undertaker jumping ship to WCW. Quote, We had Taker close. All of a sudden, he wasn't the dead man. He became the American badass for a reason. The dead man wasn't going to come to WCW. He would have been the biker character and gone by Mark Calloway. All along, I was trying to get guys money. I was trying to get guys paid. And what happened was, Vince started giving huge guarantees to the Shawns and Undertakers and those guys and said, quote, I can't lose my core guys. In other interviews, he went on to say that in September of 1999, you would see The Undertaker in black street clothes and bandana backstage because Vince McMahon was doing The Undertaker a favor and getting people used to him as a biker from when he went to WCW. Now what? Now wait, re repeat that last... Now that does not a quote for, this is just an accusation from Lem. In oh. other interviews, Kevin Nash went on to say that in September of 1999, you would see The Undertaker in black street clothes and bandana backstage because Vince McMahon was doing The Undertaker a favor and getting people used to him as a biker for when he went to WCW. If you saw The Undertaker dressed in street clothes backstage, that's because that's the street clothes he wore in off the street. Well, what are your thoughts on Kevin Nash's... I guess what he's saying here is that The Undertaker became the American badass because he was considering a jump to WCW. Anything Bullshit. you know about this? Bullshit. <coughs> Bullshit. 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 Um, well, I might take issue with that. No, uh, come on. No, yes, the Undertaker gimmick was owned by the WWF, so he couldn't have gone there as the Undertaker, but he became the American badass during the Attitude Era because it's it's the same reason that Austin, a couple years later, thought, oh, I should turn heel, because he, he didn't want to be left behind in the, the older era when everything was supposed to be more reality-based and the guys were supposed to be more real. Well, that works for Steve Austin. That didn't necessarily work for The Undertaker. Uh, but at the same time, of course, with especially some of Shitstain's booking, the more reality-type television stuff was actually farther from reality. But uh, Taker was j he That was him naturally, more him, more Mark Calloway than Undertaker, was the guy on the motorcycle with the tattoos and the blah, blah, blah. Um, and it worked when they were playing the Kid Rock song. But that, if you notice, after a couple of years, and then the, the, I guess, the Dark Undertaker and the Ministry and, and all of that stuff, he started slowly morphing back into the Undertaker. And when did the Undertaker become more popular than ever before in his career? When he actually went back to being the Undertaker after the American Badass and the Ministry of Darkness and all that stuff. Am I lying or am I telling the truth? It was a big moment. I believe it was WrestleMania 20, right? Where he came back with Paul Bearer as the dead man. Because Coke and New Coke. Yeah, people might have been a little bored with Coke. And when they heard New Coke, oh, shit. Then they found out they didn't like New Coke as much. And they were overjoyed. And Coke never sold so much in its life as when they had taken it away and then brought it back. The American badass was more of Mark Calloway, and it was okay, but it wasn't The Undertaker, and the people wanted The Undertaker. And Mark Calloway, the person, was smart enough to realize, even if Kevin Nash or whoever was trying to twist his arm, 
I'm figured in here. This is my golden gimmick. I don't know if he thought at that time it's only going to get better and bigger from here, but I think he did. Mark was too smart to leave the part of a lifetime in whatever iteration it was being presented in to go to a company where he also, he's really smart at how business works and he's seen Vince work up close and he's seen how a, a, a an organized company works. Even when sometimes it wasn't organized in the WWF, it never came close to the chaos under the Turner empire. He would not have made that change. It <laughs> not for a, an amount of money that they were going to pay him at the time because he knew what he had with Vince and he knew he was figured in and he knew as long as his body held up that he had years and years to go there and it was an WCW was more of an unknown quantity the business was not run as well even if they'd given him Bret Hart money for a couple of years, remember the undertaker in the attitude era was also was one of the seven figure guys. He was making more than a million dollars a year working for Vince McMahon and had gotten seniority where he could call some things and he could have some time off if he wanted, or he could do things that he wanted to do. I don't believe the, the as smart as Mark is about business and the business and the position he was in that he would have, eh, I'll just go down here and so I can hang out with all my other old buddies. He ain't that guy. He, I'm sure he loves to keep in track, track and, and in touch with him on the phone, but no, I, I can't see that happening. It, it was a natural progression that he wanted to change and probably they wanted him to change because they wanted to update the Undertaker for the Attitude Era. And that just actually worked out better, even though they didn't realize it, because when they gave the people back the original Undertaker, updated in some small ways, it made him bigger than ever before. Well, you know, Jim, I have to wonder if, considering the way things worked out with WCW, if The Undertaker had made that jump, if perhaps shortly after that, being in that organization... If he wouldn't have asked himself, you know, I wonder if there's a way I can sue Kevin Nash for talking me into this. And perhaps if he thought that, he would pick up the phone and call the most important person who could help him. Who? Call Stephen P. To the rest. Yes, folks, whether you need to sue a seven foot man for lying to you about your employment or just any other no good, sorry, gum bump and sack of snake feces that has wronged you in some way, look no further and call no one else than newlawoffice.com 888 692 8084 and the fine, fine consigliere of the cult of Cornette, Stephen P. knew himself not only. Is Stephen a successful attorney representing those who have been wronged and damaged by these greedy major corporations, but also he's getting into wrestling promotion because he's helping promote the big all-star wrestling event in Beckley, the Raleigh County Armory, this coming August. It's the Bash in Beckley. And Jerry the King Lawler has already been scheduled to appear. I will be there in spirit because it's outside my home. But... The Bash and Beckley, more news on that coming up. And Brian, you've heard this. The big cases are now starting to come to trial. We've talked about so many of them that Stephen's been working on. He's representing people involved in various cases against the big chemical companies, the big oil companies, and also 3M, who manufactured the defective earplugs that damaged the hearing of so many of service members. Uh, some of the cases that Stephen is representing have come from directly here from our listeners, but a few of the 
early cases of some of these people that have been damaged have been filed and they've already come in and judgments for a couple of million dollars apiece. Stephen is representing, I think, a sum total of about 60 of these folks. There were a bunch of these service members that were basically given defective earplugs for the loud noises, the mortar, the shells, and all that thing, and they were defective and they've suffered hearing loss. If you know anybody in your family or social circle that's that, hap that has happened to, get in touch with Stephen, newlawoffice.com, 888-692-8084, because these folks at 3M are going to have to pay through the teeth to make it up for the people that they've hurt. Regardless of what your injury, damage, or situation may be, Stephen P. New is the man for you. And if you need wrestling tickets in Beckley, he soon will be that man also.